The purpose of this lab is to create a titration curve and use it to determine the amount of acid in typical servings of three common beverages. The first step of any lab is gathering the proper materials. For this lab, you're going to need a burette clamp, a ring stand, a burette, an Erlenmeyer flask, graduated cylinders, sodium hydroxide, deionized water, white grape juice, orange juice, pineapple juice, a pH meter, and phenolphthalein. And that brings us to our next point, safety. When you enter the lab, it's important to tie back long hair, put on closed toed shoes, and wear lab goggles. For this lab, you should also wear a lab apron. Put the loop over your head and tie it behind your back. But I feel like you should already know how to put on a lab apron. Make sure not to get any chemicals on your hands while pouring out different materials. In the event of a spill, immediately wash your hands, but please just handle the glassware with care to prevent anything bad from happening. If you somehow manage to screw up and break glassware, carefully gather up the pieces. You should really wear gloves while doing this. Also, what I'm throwing back into the sink is salt. I am not washing glass down the drain. Anyway, then go put the shards in the designated glass disposal bin. As a reminder, you really should not ingest any of the substances you are working with in lab. Time to start titrations! This is the proper setup for a titration. Place the burette in the burette clamp and then position the Erlenmeyer flask underneath it. Measure out 5 milliliters of one of the fruit juices. We use white grape juice for this video, but it doesn't matter which one you pick. Measure out 30 milliliters of deionized water. Then, combine both the distilled water and the juice in the Erlenmeyer flask. Add 2 drops of phenolphthalein to the solution, then place the flask back under the burette. Then, get somebody tall to pour 50 milliliters of sodium hydroxide into the burette. Make sure the burette is in the closed position while pouring. Up and down is open, horizontal is closed. Now it's time to start titrating! Release the titrant in 1 milliliter increments. You should measure the pH of the solution after every 1 milliliter addition of titrant. Then record the value of the pH in your data table. Continue titrating in 1 milliliter increments and recording the pH after every addition until you're nearing the equivalence point. This could take a while depending on which juice you use. Eventually, you'll start nearing the equivalence point of the titration. You'll be able to tell when this happens because the color change of the solution will persist for longer before returning to normal. Once this occurs, you should start titrating drop by drop rather than milliliter by milliliter to ensure that you don't miss the equivalence point of the titration. We'll explain missing the equivalence point in a minute. This was the equivalence point for our titration. Missing the equivalence point means you added too much of the titrant and sent the system past its equivalence point. This is pretty easy to spot because the solution will turn a solid color. Once you're done with your first titration, repeat the process with the other two juices. Once you're done with the titrations, it is important to clean up your lab station properly. Carefully and thoroughly rinse your burette and the rest of the glassware. Then make sure all of your materials are back in their proper spots.
And finally, remember to wash your hands with both soap and water before leaving the lab station. Happy titrating, nerds!